Yay, it's finally here. I'm so stoked. Hey there, RC Girl here. Today we are learning how to 3D print for the first time. I am so stoked to share everything I've learned with you guys. This video is going to be from the perspective of a beginner. I am totally new to filament 3D printing. I just got the Creality Ender 5 S1 and Sonic Pad in the mail. As a newbie myself, in this video, I'm hoping to share everything I learned to get you started on your 3D printing journey for the first time. Stay tuned. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm all about helping people grow in the remote control hobby, sharing things like learning how to 3D print for the first time. So if you guys don't wanna miss my next video, make sure to like and subscribe. Huge thank you to my growing community of patrons on Patreon for all their support. And of course, huge thank you to our sponsor for this video, Aura. Who's had their personal information stolen online? I know I have had fraudulent charges on my bank accounts several times, which is basically all of us at some point. It was so frustrating. We live in the age of online shopping, being on unsecured Wi-Fi networks and social media. We have so much information out there and it's so hard to control who has access to that. Data brokers are unfortunately making a ton of money selling our personal information online to use that information for not so great purposes. And that's where Aura can help. In Aura's dashboard, I put in my name, email address, and phone number, and they showed me 21 sites where my information was available without my consent. It's kind of crazy. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your personal information, and they actually submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They can monitor so many things on your behalf. I put in my social security number, bank accounts, credit card and bank info, my driver's license, and more. You can even put in your birth certificate. They will let you know if anyone is using that information. On top of that, through their portal, you can also activate a VPN and use their antivirus software on all your devices, all in one place. Very cool. I have so much more peace of mind knowing that Aura is working behind the scenes to keep my personal information safe online. I definitely encourage you to check out Aura, see where your information is being stored. I bet it will surprise you. Using the link aura.com slash rcgirl, you can start your free two week trial. Clipper, Marlin, extruders, XYZ axes, all the filament types, slicers, raspberry pi. It can all seem super overwhelming when you're learning to 3D print for the first time, but I got this a week ago and I'm getting really amazing prints out of it. I was able to print this scaled trailer that really inspired my 3D printing journey. I'm interested in this specifically for the remote control hobby, but there are so many different applications for 3D printing. I'm gonna walk through some of the basics of the learning process so you can feel confident getting your first 3D print. We're gonna talk about the basic workflow, anatomy of a 3D printer, how everything works, share my full setup with the Creality Ender 5 S1 and Sonic Pad, share some resources with you guys that I learned from and used to get my printer dialed in and calibrated. We're of course going to print some awesome things and then stick around for the end where I'm gonna share my top do's and don'ts for beginners getting started in 3D printing. This video is also split into chapters, so feel free to jump around. All right, let's jump on in. First off, there are two major types of 3D printers out there for the home printer, FDM and SLA. We're gonna be talking about FDM printers today with the Creality Ender 5 and the whole Ender series. Those are all FDM or Fused Deposition Modeling printers where essentially plastic filament is pushed into a hot extruder. The filament is then heated and deposited through the nozzle onto a build platform, individual layer by layer to form a complete object. One of my fellow YouTubers, Trail Features, called this a glorified hot glue gun that is compared to SLA or stereolithography apparatus, which is also known as a resin printer. Resin printers use UV light under a vat of liquid resin to cure or harden the resin slice by slice. I actually started with resin printing, so I'm not completely new to 3D printing, but these are very different processes. There are pros and cons of each printer type. Briefly, the pros and cons is that you can get really high detailed prints with resin printing, but they are very fragile and you're dealing with lots of toxic chemicals. So your printers need to be in a vented area and requires a lot more consumables. You have to wash your prints in isopropyl alcohol and also cure them with UV light. So the process is very different. 
Really figure out what you're hoping to 3D print and weigh the pros and cons of each method. After trying both, I think FDM is probably the easier route to go and most accessible for most people learning to 3D print for the first time. Let's jump into the basic workflow. How does this all work? Let's demystify it for you. We're gonna be starting with a pre-designed object. There's lots of different sites out there like Thingiverse and Things where you can download pre-designed files for free. Very cool, people have uploaded those. You can take their files and print them yourself on your own printer. If you are so inclined, there are also programs out there where you can design your own objects, but we're gonna be starting with pre-designed objects. So we have our object downloaded. We're going to import that into a slicer software. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more detail later in the video. There's a bunch of different slicer options out there. We're going to be using Cura, and this essentially tells your printer all the functions it needs to do to turn your object into a print. We're gonna put our print in the best orientation. Sometimes we may need to add supports if there are overhangs. We're going to then slice our object and export that to our printer, either on a thumb drive or wirelessly. We actually have the Sonic pad here where we can upload our prints wirelessly to the printer, very cool. Before we print our object, we need to make sure that our printer is preheated. You need to preheat the hot end extruder as well as the bed. We have our filament loaded, our bed is level. Now we can start our print. All right, let's talk about my setup. Today we're taking a look at the Creality Ender 5 S1. Creality is a China-based company set up in 2014 and their goal is to really bring 3D printing to the home printer. Their Ender series is their best known. Probably the Ender 3 might be one of the best selling printers out there for the home printer. A couple quick things to look for in your first 3D printer is first, what are you hoping to print? What are the size of those objects? Check out the different build volumes of each of the printers. I really wanted a printer with auto bed leveling. Cost is also a huge factor. The Creality Ender 5 S1 is currently available for $589, but you can actually get the Ender 3 for less than $200, which is very accessible for a lot of people. And then what temperature is your printer rated to? That's really gonna determine what filaments you can use with that printer. Different filament types are going to vary in properties, applications, temperature ranges that they print at. I would definitely suggest starting with PLA for a beginner. It's gonna be the most beginner friendly and easiest to dial in as you're learning. Alrighty, so now we're ready to assemble our Creality Ender 5 S1. It took about an hour or so for me. This is actually my first one if you have set these up before. It will be a breeze. It is nicely packaged here for you. Definitely have a level and a straight edge so you can square up the frame of the printer. I actually assembled this on a non-level surface the first time. I had to actually move it, reassemble it, and re-level it. I'm gonna link out to a free, really amazing tutorial that literally walks through every single step of the setup process from bolt to bolt. If you're interested in the Creality Ender 5 S1, definitely check out that video. I'm gonna put the printer specs on the screen. This is a 220 by 220 by 280 millimeter print volume. This is touted as a really high speed printer. It can print lots of different filament types, has auto bed leveling. All in all, it feels really, really solid. Speaking from a beginner, this was a really great printer to learn on and grow with. It has a lot more functions that I can definitely grow into and learn as I go. All right, so how does this printer work? What are the primary components? Let's talk about that. This is actually a printer where the build plate or the bed moves up and down. This is going to be our Z axis here. It's going to move the build plate down as it builds your print. We have a nice heated bed here, it even has a magnetic build plate, so you can easily take your prints off when they're finished. Then we have our X axis here, which is this one, and then our Y axis, which is front to back. Here we have the hot end and our nozzle and extruder. This is where your filament comes out. You can see a little piece in there now and our filament comes through this PTFE tube from our filament roll, which is down here. So some printers have the filament up top. I really like this nice compact design. The printer also has a sensor in here if the filament runs out. There's a little blue light that goes on and it'll stop your print if your printer is out of filament. Your hot end essentially moves along these axes to build your object. This does have a nice onboard touch screen here, but we're actually overriding that when we're using the Sonic pad. But if you don't have the Sonic pad, you're going to transfer your prints using this full size SD card slot. One thing that is very, very important is making sure that your bed is level. 
I'm not gonna go into that in detail. You can manually level it by adjusting these screws here. Also has an auto level feature where it'll measure various points along the bed and make sure that everything is nice and level for your print. So what's the purpose of the Sonic Pad? What is it? It's essentially a mini computer that will serve as the processor telling the printer what to do. The onboard one will do totally fine on this printer. However, the Sonic Pad adds a couple additional features that I am really grateful for. It has 10 times more computing power, which can increase your printing speeds while retaining quality. You can also upload your prints wirelessly. You can be anywhere in your house on your Wi-Fi network and send your prints directly to the printer without having to use a thumb drive. You can also hook up up to four prints with this. You can even hook up a webcam and monitor your prints through their online interface. Has a couple additional features that I have yet to explore like resonance and pressure control to really dial in your printer and get the best possible prints. After we got our printer all set up, it has two preloaded files pre-sliced for you. The little bunny here printed in about 18 minutes. It was super fast, so it's set to print pretty high speeds. I was so impressed with how this turned out. It's really great to see how far 3D printing technology has come over the years. It also has a Benchy, which is basically something everyone in 3D printing has to print at some point. It's a good benchmark print to show you how your printer is set up and if you need to make any modifications. It has these overhangs here. We're going to talk about what to look for in your prints and how to get them more dialed in in a second. But after I set up the printer, I was really impressed with these prints. Of course, we had to do a couple fun prints, so I downloaded this Articulating Gecko. Turned out so good, they actually print out interlocking like this. So cool. So we printed the Benchy, we printed the Bunny in no time. Super easy, but that was pre-sliced for you. Now I want to print and slice my own files that I've downloaded from Thingiverse. But first off, what is slicing? A slicer is software you'll need to install. There's many different options out there. They take your 3D model or object you wanna print and convert that into printing instructions for your printer to build that object. On the thumb drive that comes with the Creality Ender 5S1, Creality has its own slicer on there. I tried using that, it didn't work too well with my computer. I actually ended up downloading Kira instead. Seems to be a really popular slicer out there. Very user friendly. We're gonna go briefly over Kira. So we're going to open that up and we're actually gonna be printing my one tenth scale trailer files. I've been waiting to print this so bad. Here is our print bed. We've set this specifically to the Ender 5 S1 print volume. We're going to open our trailer files and this project actually has 36 individual prints. We're going to be printing some of those in black PLA and a couple of them in gray PLA, specifically the main trailer portion and our leaf springs here are going to be in gray. You're gonna have the best quality if you're just printing individual objects at a time, but since we have so many prints, we're going to lump a couple together. So you can click on your object and move it around the build plate. On the left here, you can change the scale and you can rotate the object on the three axes using these arrows here. I'm going to print most of the smaller objects first and we're actually saving the giant trailer piece for last. It's actually a 17 hour print. So fingers crossed that all goes well. Once we have the object we want to print in place, we're going to slice that. And some of the most important things are over to the right here on the screen. These are going to be your print settings. And what I do is I save individual print settings for a specific filament type. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later. Here is where you can really modify tons of different settings. These settings are crucial to getting a really good print. I didn't really know where to start with these settings. So what I did is I used the recommended settings from Vlad's tutorial video. And as I learned a little bit more, I started to make some modifications. Once we have all the settings that we want, we're going to click slice and that's going to apply those settings to your object. In the bottom right corner, it tells you approximately how long that print is going to take and how much filament is going to take. Up top here, you can go to the preview tab. Using the scroll over here, you can toggle through each individual layer and see how it's going to build your print. We're going to upload our print. This is the trailer top. 
it's going to connect to the sonic pad and we're going to go over to the sonic pad and pull that into the printer. We're gonna start printing all our trailer parts. I'm so excited to see this come together. All right, so we have most of our trailer components printed. We just did the fenders, we got the leaf springs, we got our little front storage box. Everything's turning out super great. The last thing is basically the main trailer component. It's going to be a 17 hour print. I'm a little bit nervous. We're starting it this morning and I think we're gonna have to let it go into the night. So wish me luck. We are about 45% done with the trailer, the main box. Uh, we are seven and a half hours into the print. We have about 10 hours remaining. So far, so good. This is looking super clean. Uh, hopefully things continue on the path they're on. I might have to break a rule and actually let this go into the night. So see you guys in a couple hours. All right, checking on our 17 and a half hour print. It looks pretty good. All right, we're done with our 110 scale adventure trailer. It turned out so freaking good. I'm really impressed with my first ever filament 3D print. 36 different files, lots of hours of printing. I thought this was a really great object to print for my first ever print. Everything's like pretty square, really nicely designed to 3D print easily. Added a couple scale accessories here, like this fire extinguisher, some National Geographic stickers. I have some door handle stickers from my sticker stash. Um, I actually resin 3D printed these jerry cans, so that's the only thing that I didn't print out of filament, the PLA filament. Printed this out of gray PLA, most of the stuff out of black PLA, and I actually got in clear PLA for our light lenses back here. Got a little scale license plate sticker. So someone took the file and actually converted it so that these will be magnetic, so maybe I'll have to do that. Uh, we still need to add a roof rack up here. Uh, Want to add some lights as well, but it's coming along. It's like nearly finished and it looks so good. And it fits perfectly on my pintle hitch that I sell from Fix RC on my Traxxas TRX4 Land Rover Defender. And our leaf springs down here turned out pretty good. There's actually a couple different leaf options. I went with the thinner ones, so hopefully they're a little bit springy, a little bit of suspension there. So leaf springs are never, you know, the best suspension out there, but I think that'll be just fine for this light little trailer. All right, so we're getting some really great prints. I've learned a ton from these test prints that I've been doing, and I'm just striving to get the best prints possible from my printer. There's two things that I learned here. First is the mechanical and maintenance part of the printer. When I moved it from one room to the other, I realized I did not build it on a level surface. So it was basically wearing out one of the wheels. You can adjust lots of different things on your printer. So I actually watched a video from a guy that services lots of different 3D printers. That was super helpful for me to know what to look for. Belt and wheel tension. I actually greased the Z axes. Make sure you know how to service your printer and keep it in good operating condition. The next thing that's gonna be super important is doing calibration prints. So I would actually suggest this for every single filament that you use. They're gonna have slightly different properties, different temperatures that they print at. 
probably the three primary things as a beginner to make sure that you're getting dialed in is your temperature, your speed, and your flow rate. I actually did three different calibration prints to dial each of those in. One really great thing about Cura is there's plugins you can install to do some of these calibrations. So what I first, I printed a temperature tower. On an individual print, every couple layers, it's going to change the temperature by five degrees. So you can really see what the impact of temperature does on the quality of your prints. I did two different temperature towers, one for the gray PLA and one for the black. It goes from 220 degrees to 180 in five degree increments. So each tower is printed at five degree difference. So you can compare on a single print what the impact of temperature is and really dial in your temperature for an individual filament. A filament will tell you on the packaging what the temperature range is, but it's like 180 to 230 sometimes. So that is a very, very wide range. We want to do our own test on a filament and see what the ideal temperature is here. A couple things you wanna look out for here is these overhangs. The temperature and the cooling rate is going to dictate the quality of the overhangs. So on the black, it seems around 200 or 205 is the ideal temperature to get really nice clean overhangs. Now we know how to set our appropriate temperature for the filament. The next thing I did is a speed tower. Similar to the temperature tower, this is going to change the printing speed every few layers so we can go from 50 millimeters a second to 150 and see the impact of speed on the quality of our prints. The faster the printing, we're gonna get some more ghosting here. So we can basically see a little bit of our object printing where it shouldn't be. Basically the motors are kind of vibrating and you're gonna get those vibrations showing throughout your print. It's a trade-off here with speed. So it's really nice for your prints to print more quickly so that you're not waiting like 12 hours for a print, but that is also going to impact your quality. While this printer can print at very high speeds, you're going to be sacrificing quality a little bit. I'm most interested in getting really high quality prints. So I've been printing my prints at around 60 millimeters a second. So we've dialed in our temperature, we've dialed in our speed. The next test that I did is making sure that when we print something that says it's one millimeter, it's actually printing out in one millimeter on the printer. That's where these little boxes come in. So we're going to be printing an individual layer, which is 0.4 millimeters, and we're going to print that out and make sure that on the printer, it comes out in actually 0.4 millimeters. These little cubes are going to tell us about the flow rate of the printer, and we can make adjustments so that we are printing objects true to size. May not be as important if you're printing like little scale trailers, but if you're printing things that have really tight tolerances, like having objects true to size are gonna be important. My first cube walls came out at 0.48 millimeters. They're supposed to be 0.4, so it's actually extruding a little bit too high. Put a link in here to a calculator that I used to adjust my flow rate percentage. I printed a second one with the reduced flow rate. We're getting a couple gaps in spacing. What I had to do with my third print was adjust the z-axis height. Because it's not extruding as much, we had to make sure our z-axis height was a little bit closer to the nozzle. Lots of different things to dial in here, but after the third cube, we had our flow rate calibrated. There are so many other different things that you can calibrate and tune on these printers, but I think if you get your speed, your flow rate, and your temperature dialed, to me, those three things seem to be the main components for getting really high quality prints. Alrighty, so we are well on our way to 3D printing. I wanted to share some do's and don'ts, some tips, some advice for beginners that I learned along the way that are probably common knowledge for people with more experience, but things that I thought were super helpful. First one, as tempting as it is, don't leave your printer running unattended or running overnight without being able to check on it. If your print fails, you wanna be able to stop your print and in the worst case scenario, you can actually rip off your hot end, which is pretty expensive to replace. So make sure that you are monitoring and checking your prints regularly. Our next one is your first few layers are going to probably be your most important. That's when you can check that your Z-axis height is set correctly. You can make sure your flow rate is right and everything's adhering to the bed. Those tend to be when most of my problems happen and I could stop a print and correct it. The next thing, one thing I like to do before I start a print is clean my build plate with IPA, isopropyl alcohol. Make sure you get off all the grease from your fingers and other things. So start with a really nice clean bed that's gonna really help with your prints adhering to the build plate. 
Another tip is don't leave your hot end running at all times. Keeping that at 200 degrees Celsius or more can be bad for your machine. Also bad to have your filament constantly at temperature. So just preheat it when you're about to start a print. Another piece of advice is don't be rough with your build plate. Try not to put a lot of pressure on it when you're removing your prints. Take off your magnetic plate if you have one. Leveling is a precision process down to like 0.01 millimeters. So putting a little pressure on that is going to unlevel your bed really quickly. So be very gentle with your build plate. My next piece of advice is that these are precision instruments. So keep them free of dust, drafts, extreme temperature changes, movement like slamming doors during a print can sometimes mess with your prints. Don't keep them in a place where they're going to get bumped or collect a lot of dust. My next piece of advice is also an important one. Calibrate your printer to every filament. Your temperature settings, your flow rate, your z-axis height could differ for all your different filaments, even within a filament type. For example, PLA, black PLA could be different than red PLA. What I like to do is save a slicer preset for each of my filaments so that I could just load that up for every specific filament. Ideally, what people have recommended is having a printer set specifically for a single filament type, if that's possible for you. If not, definitely save slicer settings specific to an individual filament. Another thing I would recommend is picking up some spares of common items. I actually uh, melted a couple holes into my build plate when I was leveling it. So I picked up another magnetic build plate. I also picked up a couple spare nozzles. Those seem to be things that need to be replaced somewhat often. So have a few spares of common things on hand. That is it for my tips. If you guys have been into 3D printing for a while and have additional tips to share for a beginner, definitely shoot me a comment below. Would love to add to the list. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It was a ton of fun learning how to 3D print for the first time. I have to say a huge thank you to Creality for sending out the Ender 5 S1 and Sonic Pad so that I could begin my my journey into 3D printing. And huge thank you to our sponsor for this video and really making this video possible, Aura. I hope I was able to inspire you to learn how to 3D print for the first time. As a reminder, make sure to subscribe or see you later.